Brown, Mysteries. Adventures in excitement and suspense, based on the best-selling novels by the slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Carter Brown to bring you another of my stories. The title of this one is Nightmare for Night, and in case that doesn't make sense to you, I'd better explain that my hero's name is Nicholas Knight. He's a private investigator, and this is the account of one of his cases. A blend of East and West, a mixture of mayhem and mystery. So let me introduce Nicholas Knight, usually known as Nicky. I don't get many surprises in the private eye business, but this was one of them. This slim, sleek, suave character who'd walked into my office and introduced himself as an Arabian sheik. <laughs> I thought it was a gag until he produced proof. And then when he came out with his proposition, I thought that was a gag too. I looked at his black eyes and his black pointed beard, at his perfectly cut suit and his perfectly dazzling smile, and thought I'd heard everything. Hello, Mr. Knight, you seem a little taken aback. Well, that is putting it mildly. Me, bodyguard for a harem. I appreciate it may be something of an unusual assignment for you, but I am perfectly serious about it. The Prince Al-Zaman will be here in the city for two weeks. He has delicate negotiations to conduct. They concern the oil, of course. <laughs> of course. And he has brought four of his harem with him, the four most beautiful. Also three guards, but the guards know nothing of the ways of the Western world. That is why we think it necessary to engage a private detective as well. Uh-huh, I see. And when do they arrive? This afternoon. I have rented a house for them, a large house some 20 miles out of the city. It has a high wall surrounding it which will ensure privacy. <laughs> With a harem in town, privacy is a good idea. I would like you to arrive at the house not later than 7 this evening. The prince will be there and I shall present you. A room will be at your disposal and you will be required to stay in the house for the next 14 days. The duration of the prince's visit. Uh -huh. I trust that will suit you, Mr. Knight. Oh, Sheik Haroon, for the dough you're paying me, I'll even wear a sarong. You have, of course, a gun. Yeah? You expect that sort of trouble? I do not expect any trouble, Mr. Knight. I am just taking precautions, that is all. I'll bring my gun with me. I think in that case there is nothing further to discuss. I shall see you at the house. I have written the address and directions how to reach it. Please be prompt, Mr. Knight. The prince does not like to be kept waiting. I'll be on time. Excellent. Your English is very good, if I may say so, Sheikh Haroon. So they told me at Harvard. Uh-oh. Good morning, Mr. Knight. Oh, no. What the heck does a guy packed to go looking after four harem beauties? Well, let's see now. Shirts. Uh-uh. Visitors yet. Okay, okay, don't bust your G-string. Yep. Uh, Mr. Knight. In person. May I see you for a moment? It is urgent. Yeah, sure. Come in. Park your hat and follow me. Now, uh, park yourself. There's a good chair. Uh, thank you. Well, what's so urgent? It is a rather delicate mission, Mr. Knight. I, I'm not sure where to start. Well, make it fast, pal. I haven't got much time. And, of course, how rude of me. I shall have to be blunt. You are hurrying now to undertake an assignment for Prince Elzaman. Am I? You are discreet, Mr. Knight. But you don't know much about Prince Elzaman. He's not a very pleasant person, I assure you. In his own country, he is absolute dictator and acts as such. Life and death are his to command, and no woman is safe from his harem. The prince's word is absolute. Well, what do you want me to do, start a crusade? There was one woman. She was beautiful and not one of his subjects. She was a French girl named Marie Desprez. He met her on the Riviera. He, he made her many offers, even marriage. Mm -hmm. Then she disappeared. And by the time her disappearance was discovered, the prince's yacht had sailed. Marie Desprez has not been seen since. How do you know all this? I am her brother, Louis Desprez. Oh. Now, I knew it would have been suicide for me to try and enter Elzaman's own country, so I have waited for him to leave it. This is the first time he has done so since last summer. He has brought some of his hair on with him. I know that. What I do not know is whether Marie is one of them. Now, you are the one man who can help me, who will be in a position to find out if he has my sister. Uh, yeah, but it, it's not as simple as that. You, you mean money? Mr. Knight, I will pay you $5,000 no, no, to no, find no, out if Marie... it's not a question of dough. 
I've got a reputation in this town as an honest investigator. I've been employed by Prince Al Zaman. Now you want me to spy on him. I see. There's no more to be said then. I only ask that you forget we have ever met, have ever had this conversation. I shall spend my life looking for Marie. But if Al Zaman learns of it, my chances will not be worth a snap of the fingers. Oh, look, now, I if I want to contact you, where do I find you? The Hotel Arcadia. Mr. Knight, does that mean you will do it? I don't know. I'll, I'll, ha I'll have to think about it. Monsieur, if you do, you'll have the undying gratitude of a desperate man. I shall wait anxiously at the hotel for a word from you. Well, don't, don't bank on it. I know a man when I see one. Au revoir, Monsieur Knight. <laughs> It was sharp on seven when I turned up at the house, a large, forbidding sort of building surrounded by a large, forbidding sort of wall. There was a guard at the gates and another at the doorway of Prince Al Zaman's private apartments to which the Sheikh Haroon led me. The guard at the door wore a long, curved knife, <laughs> and he didn't look as though it was just for decoration. He opened the door and ushered us in. You will address the prince as your highness. When I saw the prince, I felt more like addressing him as Fatso. He was reclining on two overstuffed cushions, and it was hard to tell where he finished and the cushion started. There was a four-pound box of chocolates beside him, and he kept dipping into it with his fat, short fingers. I have brought the private detective, Your Highness. You are knight. I am, uh, you, Your Highness. Mm. These are excellent chocolates, Harun. You honor me, my prince. Knight. Yeah? Your Highness. Uh, your Highness? You yeah. understand I shall be away for some days from tomorrow morning. It is essential for my women to be well guarded. My guards have orders to kill any intruder. What? Your orders are exactly the same. <laughs> a hard center. Hey, now, wait a minute. This is the United States. This business about killing, you can't do it. Are you questioning me? I guess not, Your Highness. That is better. You need not fear any consequences, Knight. My influence with your country is considerable. The women's apartments are directly above here. I have given orders that no one enters on pain of death. No one. Yeah, I get it. I, I mean, I understand, Your Highness. Should you need any assistance, you have only to call my guards or speak English. In my own country, I find that has certain advantages. I can give orders which will not be understood by eavesdroppers. Yeah, I guess that would be a help uh, in your country. I think that is everything. Arun will give you any other information you require. Retire from the prince's presence backwards. What? Oh, oh, sure. Mm. Ah. Mm, the first layer is finished already. The box will not last out the night. Abdul, the audience is over. Yes, yeah, Sidi. Mr. Knights, let me introduce you to Abdul. He will be upstairs most of the time guarding the harem. Ah, oh, good evening. Well, I'll be with you. Come along now, Mr. Knight, and I will show you your room. Oh, thanks. I think you found the prince a little startling. Yeah, uh, a little. It is understandable from the Western point of view, but in our country, you must remember, he is the absolute ruler. And you get caught by one of those knives if you feed him the wrong sort of chocolates. It is not advisable to joke about the prince, Mr. Knight. Mm -hmm. Here is your room. I trust you will be comfortable. I have left you a bottle of your American rye. Oh, say, that's, that, that's really thoughtful of you. Uh, how about we open it now? We do not drink alcohol, Mr. Knight, but if you care to do oh. so, open it by all means. Tomorrow morning, the prince leaves to conduct his negotiations, and I go with him. As the prince told you, the four women are upstairs. There is also Fatima, who looks after them. Uh -huh. She prepares all the meals and will serve yours. Then there is Abdul, whom you have met, yeah. Hassan, an Arab, uh -huh. and Blanc, the guard on the gate. Yeah. Well, sounds nice and cozy. Cheers. <coughs> what, what in thunder is that? That is the prince going to make his nightly inspection of the harem. The gong is a warning that he is coming. Yeah, I can see how that would be needed. Is that another joke, Mr. Knight? Oh, no, Sheik. Any way you look at it, it's no joke. <laughs> After breakfast next morning, I took a stroll down the drive. I saw a car disappearing through the gates, the Prince and Haroon on their way. That left me and the harem uh, and the guards. The one on the gate who had let me through last night was right on the job. I thought I might as well strike up an acquaintance, and this time I used the right greeting. Al, I'll be with you. And you, boss. Heck of a morning, ain't it? <laughs> hey, you don't sound like you come from the Prince's country. Well, only been there about three years, boss. 
Between you and me, I was a seaman on a tanker. But I ran into a little bother in tuners and skipped a ship. Then I wound up on this job. Uh-huh. You like it? It's sure better than jail, boss. Uh-oh. Here comes trouble. Hmm? Oh, you mean that little guy coming towards us? Uh, who's that? That's Hassan. He's pure poison, boss. Yes, sir. Pure poison. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you are Mr. Knight. I am Hassan. Oh, yeah. Haroon uh, mentioned you, Hassan. Being a guard is dull work, don't you think, Mr. Knight? So little excitement. It is always more exciting to attack than defend. And more dangerous. Life is nothing without danger. I do not know why my master, the prince, should have engaged your services. I am a superb shot, a brilliant knife thrower, and my cunning is known throughout the East. Well, such brilliance must be exhausting. Maybe he wanted to give you a rest. Possibly. Although I could have told him I am not tired. It has been delightful to meet you, Mr. Knight. We shall see more of each other. For the present, good morning. Say, Blanc, uh, what does that character do for a living, huh? Oh, he does many jobs for the prince. Any time the prince wants something fixed... It's Hassan who does it. Uh, Sheik may be obvious about his share of the oil, then Hassan goes to see him. Oh. After Hassan sees him, the Sheik makes no more noise, ever. Yeah, I get the point. And obviously so does the Sheik, since Hassan's so slick with a knife. Uh, tell you something else, boss. He eats hashish sometimes. That's a time to stay away from him. Far away. After that, I decided the best place for me was my room. I killed the rest of the day there and the rest of the bottle. Fortunately, I'd taken the precaution of bringing a quarter of my own. By midnight, I'd made fair inroads into that, too. And then suddenly, I heard a sound. Yeah? Well, what do you know? Straight out of the Arabian Nights, yashmak, silk trousers and all. Well, I'll be with you. Shut the door, you dope. Uh, you're an American. Well, I didn't come here to see the Star Spangled Banner. Now shut that door, quick. <laughs> Carter Brown, Mysteries. Adventures in excitement and suspense, based on the best-selling novels by the slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown. This was really one for the books, the story books. Nicky Knight, the private eye, bodyguarding the harem of an eastern prince in an isolated house made even more isolated by a high stone wall. But instead of Knight coming to the harem, the harem had come to Knight. In the person of this black-haired babe with a veil over her face and the silk jacket and silk trousers trying hard to hide her how-do-you-do figure and not succeeding. I said shut the door. That fool Abdul might wake up any minute. Abdul? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. He's on guard upstairs, isn't he? <sighs> I thought he was going to wake up just as I went past him. Boy, was I scared. I don't get it. You came from the harem, but you're American. All the way from Texas. Well, then what are you doing in the harem? Oh, it was just one of those things. I was dancing in the east, and my agent took a powder with all the dough. Some of it was the management, so they tossed me out on my ear. Well, it's not exactly pleasant being broke in those countries. But Al's a man had seen me dance and made me an offer, so here I am. And you don't mind it? Oh, he sticks 300 bucks into an account for me every month. Living doesn't cost me anything. Only it's so gold darn boring. Boring? Sure. You don't see anyone all day except Fatima. And at night, when the great man makes his inspection, you know what he does? Uh, you tell me. He just sits there, eating those concerned chocolates. What? That's right. Then he goes to bed, and we go to bed. I tell you, I have never been so bored... That's why I took a chance tonight. The sneaking out? Yep. Fatima told us about you. You sounded interesting, so I thought I'd take a look. Oh, well, look your fill, lady. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> What's your name? Knight. Nick Knight. Nicky. Ah, oh, I like that. You can call me Tex. Say, that wouldn't be a real old-fashioned American bottle, would it? It would indeed. Oh, pour me one. Sure. I haven't had a swallow of one of those since George Washington was a pup. There you are. Watch out it doesn't choke you. I'm from Texas, remember? Well, he's looking at you, Nicky. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Uh, there are four of you girls up there, aren't there? 
Yep. We fight like cat and dog, too. Takes the team all the time to sort us out. Uh, who are the other three? Why? What's wrong with me? Well, from what I can see, and uh, that's plenty, and not a thing takes. Then what do you want to go asking about the others for? Oh, just curiosity. Oh. Well, there's Natasha. She's a white Russian or something. Then there's Lee Chi. She's Chinese. They're okay. But the other one, the French dame, she's a queer one. Always unhappy, always crying. Did you say she was French? Uh-huh. Her name's Marie. Marie what? Well, how the donation do I know? You know, for a guy who's just curious, you sound awfully interested. Oh, no, no. I, I'm not, Tex. You better not be. I haven't got much time. That Abdul might wake up any minute. So just you forget about the others, huh? And concentrate on me. Honey, you've come to the right boy. I can concentrate better than a short-sighted accountant looking for a missing dollar. <laughs> so, Hassan! So you would betray my master. Now, take it easy, Hassan. You know the penalty. Death. Listen, pal, don't let that hashish you've been feeding yourself give you any nutty ideas. Uh, I have told you, Knight, of my skill with the knife. You may witness it now. Down on the floor, Tex! Ah! I'm not bad with a good old American bottle myself. Ah! And then there's a the good old American rabbit punch, too. Oh. How's that for a guy who's a little out of practice? Nicky, you're going to have to do better. I think someone's coming, and my guess is Abdul. I can take care of him, too. Little Hassan won't want his gun any longer. That's it. You stay put, Tex. I'll get behind the door. What is this? Hassan? Dead? Hey, you! Woman! Where is the American? Right here! Oh, Nicky, you're colossal. Oh, so is he. If he'd hit that floor any harder, he'd gone right through it. Well, what do we do now? To coin a phrase, let's get out of here. But, Nicky, how? There's a guard on the gates, and if he sees but me... But he won't, baby, if you're lying flat on the floor in the back. And with a gun poking at him, I don't think he'll argue with me. <laughs> I was right. The ex-seaman took one look at the revolver, his eyes did a double-action rock and roll, and he unlocked the gates. I shoved my foot down on the accelerator, and we got out of the place quicker than a fish slides down a performing seal's gullet. I didn't slow down until about 15 minutes later. Whew. Well, that's better. The way you were pushing this bus along, I thought we'd end up in a ditch any minute. Honey, I used to drive a jeep in the army. After that, this is kid stuff. Where are you heading? Home, my apartment. Oh. And what about me? Where am I heading? Home, my apartment. Nicky, you're a right guy. And first thing in the morning, I'll have to get you some clothes. Some decent clothes. If a cop pulled us up now with you in that outfit... You'll have to tell him we've been to a fancy dress ball. And if he believes that, he'll believe anything. Hey! Of all the dumb... What's the matter? I've just realized what a dope I am. We could have brought that girl Marie with us. What's that French dame got that fascinates you? You haven't even seen her. It's not what she's got, it's what her brother's got. His name's Louis Despray, and he offered me 5,000 greenbacks for letting him know whether his sister's in that place or not. If we produced the sister, he, he might have made her 15. Oh, that explains the curiosity. Money. Can you think of a better explanation? I guess not. Oh, speaking of money... That dough that Fatso was depositing in a bank for you, is it an American bank? Sure. In your name? That's right. Well, then he can't touch it. It's safe. But I don't know that I am. His Highness Prince Alpha Man will never forget that I have uh, insulted his honor by leaving. He'll hunt me down, Nicky. That's the way he is. I'll let you into a secret. If what Louis Despray says is true, his sister was kidnapped. And if I can prove it... The prince might be on the other end of the hunting. Well, watch out for him, Nicky. He can be real mean. Look, what's the setup anyway? Where does this uh, Haroon who hired me fit into the picture? Well, he's the contact man in the States. He's here all the time to work out any troubles with the oil company. Well, if he's here the whole time, why did Fatso come? Well, we girls of the harem weren't taken into the prince's confidence. Uh -huh. I do know, though, that he had an urgent cable from his younger brother, and that was why he decided to make the trip. His younger brother? Who's his younger brother? Haroon, of course, stupid. Look, I may be stupid, but nobody told me that Haroon was his younger brother. Well, now I've told you. Yeah. Where does it get me? Huh? There's something screwy going on, Tex, but I just can't figure it. With those three gods already, why was I hired at all? Search me. <laughs> With you in that outfit, it wouldn't take long. 
<laughs> you know, a girl looks so stupid in this get-up once you get out of that atmosphere. A girl feels cold, too. Well, in that case, honey, move closer. <laughs> got into my apartment without being seen, <laughs> which was just as well. First thing next morning, I called Louis Despray at the Arcadia and arranged to meet him in the lounge. Then I went shopping for Tex. With a list of stuff she gave me, I was only just in time for my talk with Despray. Hey, Mr. Knight, why, when you rang, I, I, I could hardly believe it. Well, don't we get to order a drink first? No, please, Mr. Knight, you know how important this is to me. Yeah, yeah, I guess I do. She's there, Despray. She is? Is she all right? As far as I know, I didn't see her, but I have it on good authority that she's okay, but unhappy. Oh, Marie. My poor little Marie. Is there anything else you found out? One thing, that my conscience doesn't worry me anymore, not after meeting the prince. In fact, it would be a distinct pleasure to feed him some hot lead instead of chocolates. Me, I, I feel the same way. But uh, what are you doing away from the house? Order me a drink and I'll tell you. While the waiter went off with our orders, I told Louis to spray the whole story. When I finished, Louis looked up at me and his expression was serious. Hmm. So this Hassan is a really dangerous one, then, huh? Uh-huh. And after him, that mountain named Abdul. The one on the gate, Blanc, doesn't matter. He's easy meat. That is good. Oh, uh, by the way, here is your check for $5,000. Huh? <laughs> I've had it already, just in case. Well, thanks. And that keeps my promise to you for finding out whether Marie is there or not. Now, now I would ask you something more. How would you like to earn a further $5,000? I'd like. What do I have to do? Break into that house with me and rescue Marie. Say, you know, the more I think about that, the more it appeals to me. Excellent. <laughs> I told you, monsieur, when we first met, that I knew a man when I saw one. <laughs> when do you propose doing it? We should not wait too long, I think. They, uh, they may become panicky and do something drastic to my little sister. Well, when do you think? What do you say to tomorrow night? Uh-huh, suits me. I shall call for you just before midnight. By the time we get to the house, uh, everyone should be asleep. Yeah, yeah, that sounds okay. Then, monsieur, I give you a toast. To tomorrow night and success. I drank his toast and then left. In the foyer of the hotel, I bumped into an old acquaintance, Hank Green, the hotel detective. Hi, Nicky. I saw you in the lounge. Yeah, I get so reckless. I'll even chance the liquor you serve here. Uh, you get reckless, all right, with a company you keep. Huh? What's that? The guy you were drinking with. Louis Despray? Oh, is that what he calls himself now? Well, how do you mean now? I know him as Louis Katz. A nasty taste in the mouth from way back. He dodged a murder rep in France in 1948 and came to the States. <laughs> he's lucky. His parents were holidaying here when he was born. So he's got U.S. nationality and can't be kept out of the country. He's pulled everything from selling the Brooklyn Bridge to a sucker to murder. He's tough and he's clever. Also about a safe company as a death adder. Oh, brother. You sure you're not mixing him up with someone else? Oh, not me, not little Louie. <laughs> I don't sleep nights while he's staying in the hotel. You're not paid to sleep nights. Well, thanks, pal. I'll do something for you one day. Just take my advice, Nicky. If he's made you any proposition, don't take it. On the contrary, Hank, that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going along with him all the way. Carter Brown, Mysteries. Adventures in excitement and suspense, based on the best-selling novels by the slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown.
walking into it with my eyes open. Me, Nicky Knight, the smart private eye. Call me Sir Lancelot, all set to storm the wicked prince's castle and rescue the beautiful captive maiden. Only instead of riding my brave steed with my trusty sword, I rode a Buick special beside a two-time fraud. Louis de Spray, alias Louis Katz. But this was the only way I could see of finding out what the catch was. We parked the car off the road about a quarter of a mile from the house and cat-footed it up to the wall at the back of the building. You think this is the best place tonight? Yeah. The way I figure it, there's an even chance that Blanc, the guard on the gate, sleeps in the little gatehouse. Yes, that is reasonable. So if we get over the wall here, we've got a chance of getting away with it. Uh-huh. I'll go first. You give me a push-up, and then I'll give you a pull. Uh, are you ready? Ready? Yes. Okay, here, go! <laughs> I'm set. You jump and I'll grab you. Here I come. Grab grab my arm. That's it. Good work, my friend. Now down to the garden, eh? Yeah. Let's go. Now, quiet, quiet now. Where are we going? Back door. Uh, What if it is locked? Oh, I got a little gadget with me that's pretty useful for this sort of emergency. You, uh, you have your gun ready? Of course. Huh? Why that Hassan flicks a knife about, I'm not taking risks. I too. Hold it. Huh? We are here. Uh huh. You will uh, unpick the lock now, eh? No. Lesson one in the private eye manual: always test the door before trying to pick it. You never know; it might be open. Well, how do you know? It is. A piece of luck. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, this is the kitchen. That door opens on the hall. Come on. It's a light. There is a light under that door ahead. Yeah. Who lives in there? The prince when he's home. Perhaps he has returned. Let us go and see. Huh? Don't be crazy. It's the girl we're after. But I am also after the prince. Louis! What? Who dares to disturb me? Who are you? Your executioner! So much for his highness, Alzheimer's man. What did you do that for? It's just payment. Now we go upstairs to find Marie. Correction, please, not we. Me! I prefer to go the rest of the way alone, pal. You just lie there and rest. I went up the stairs two at a time, dodging from side to side as I came to make a difficult target. Then a large curved sword appeared on the landing. Behind it was Abdul. The American! Hello, Abdul. Goodbye. As he came toppling down the stairs, I pressed back against the wall and then ran for the door to the harem. I dragged it open and found myself face to face with a dark-eyed beauty with small curls and sweet curves. Who? What do you want? Are you Marie Despray? Yes? Now come to take it home. Take me? What kind of a trick is this? No trick. The prince is dead, Abdul is dead. And if we don't get out of here fast, we'll qualify for the quartet. Now come on! Well, how do you feel now? I... I, I do not quite know. I'm still dizzy from the haste. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Marie. About the rough treatment getting over the wall, but a skinned knee is better than a punctured hide. Oh, I do not mind. I am more than grateful. I kept waiting for Hassan to come yelling after us. You know, that's a funny thing. What? There was no sign of Hassan. He's the toughest of the lot. Where was he? And where was Haroon? If the prince was back, he should have been too. Oh, surely, Nicky, the, the one thing that matters is that we have got away. Yeah, that's true enough. I just can't help wondering. Uh, where are you taking me? To my apartment first. Tex is there. Tex? Oh, that's wonderful. I would like to see her again. She was kind. After that, I'm not sure. The police, probably. You were kidnapped, weren't you? Oui. On the Riviera last summer. I met Prince Erzama there. I thought he was horrible from the first. I had proof of it afterwards. Uh huh. Have you got a brother named Louis? No. I'm an only child. Oh. Does the name uh, Louis Katz mean anything to you? 
Oh, the only Louis I ever knew was Louis Malbert. The wretch who tricked me so that I was kidnapped. Is he tall, dark, gray eyes, and slightly crooked mouth? Oh, but yes. Yes, that he is. We're talking about the same Louis. I, I don't understand. Well, it's a long story, honey. And this is no time to tell it. This car? Stops? Yeah, for one very good reason, not a gas. You know, that's strange. This is Louis's car, and there's not enough gas for a two-way trip. What will you do now? Well, I'll leave you here and go look for a phone. I'll call Tex, and she can bring my car out here and pick us up. She will leave me... You will leave me alone? You can have my gun for company. I won't be long. Oh, please don't be. I'm frightened. There's no need. You just sit tight. I'll be back as fast as I can. I trudged along up the road for half a mile before I found a house and an irate farmer in a nightshirt whose bad temper disappeared when I waved a couple of five spots under his nose. He eventually led me to the phone and I dialed my apartment. Tex? Oh, Nicky. Oh, <laughs> Relax, honey. Everything's okay. Oh, thank heavens. I've been sitting here going quietly crazy. Now, I've got Marie with me, but we run out of gas. Will you bring the car out and pick us up? Oh, sure. Just give me the directions. Tex, what's the matter? Nicky, I think the door's opening. There's somebody coming inside the apartment. Tex, are you all right? <laughs> no, I... I... Tex! Uh... Tex! Hello! 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 Who's that? This is Haroon. We have your American girl. She is quite safe at the moment. She may have a headache when she wakes up, but it will pass. If you hurt Keep her... calm, Mr. Knight. No one will be hurt so long as you are sensible. What do you mean by that? It is quite simple. You have a girl. We have a girl. You want the one we have. We want the one you have. I don't get it. I think you do. We want Marie Despray back. If you want to see your friend Tex alive, you will return to us the French girl. If not, Hassan is very anxious to practice some of his peculiar talents. Hello? Mr. Knight, are you still there? Yeah. I'm still here. The exchange will be made at nine tonight. You have my word that the American girl will not be harmed in any way before then. We will meet you at the crossroads on the main highway ten miles north of the house. Is that clear? It's clear. Till nine, then, Mr. Knight. I put the receiver down and just stood looking at it. I felt as though I'd been kicked in the stomach by a specially vicious mule. The thought of Tex and that dagger-happy Hassan was the stuff that nightmares were made of. Then I went back to the old farmer and found he had some spare petrol. I bought it from him, and half an hour later, the car was ready to move again. Then I told Marie what had happened. She sat staring ahead of her for a few minutes, then turned to me. Of course, Nikki. You must take me back. No. There must be another way. But they are very thorough. There will be no other way. I tell you, there must be. We, we can't just... <laughs> <laughs> Have you gone mad? No, no, I, I just had an idea. Where do you think they'll take Tex? Back to the house, I suppose. If you were Haroon, where would be the last place you'd expect to find us, uh, you and me? Quiet. Oh, you mean go back to the house now? Why not? There's only Louis and Blanc, the guy from the gate. I think I can take care of them. Then we sit tight and wait for Haroon and Hassan to bring Tex along. They won't suspect a thing. They'll walk through the door straight into my gun. It is uh, very audacious. And that's the way wars are won, baby. Oh, very well. It is a better way than to surrender tamely. Oh, that's my girl. Hold on to your yashmak. Here we go. Keep beside me, Marie. I'm 
fine, but my knees. Oh, cats. Yes, yeah, sure. I ever have to get into this place again, I'm not going over that wall. I'll, I'll bring a couple of sticks of dynamite and blow it down. Oh, it's, it's very quiet. Yeah. What is sound from the house? No. Be careful now. We're almost at the door. It's still open. Is that not strange? Yeah. Come on, quiet as you can. Welcome back, ah! Mr. Knight. <laughs> Don't move, Knight. When the girl gets a bullet, switch the light on, Blanc. Well, <laughs> looks like we got a reception committee. Exactly, Mr. Knight. Drop your gun, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we counted on your being a clever man, Mr. Knight. If you had not been, we might have been in trouble. But we had to have a clever man, one who would react the right way. And we got you. React the right way? So the whole thing was a plant, huh? Yes, Mr. Knight. The whole thing. A perfectly planned trap. A chess game in excelsis, with you as the pawn. What's the next move? <laughs> the next move is to wait, Mr. Knight, for the prince to arrive. The prince? But, of course, Haroon is the prince now. Precisely. And he will hand you over to the police for the murder of his brother. Carter Brown, Mysteries. Adventures in excitement and suspense, based on the best-selling novels by the slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown. It was beginning to make sense. Crazy, nightmarish sense, but sense. Right from the start, I hadn't been Nicky Knight the dashing private eye. I'd been Nicky Knight the dumb puppet with every move planned for me. Even this last one, returning to the house with Marie Despray, figuring it to be a surprise twist. Only the twist was on me, with a gun pointed at me by Louis Katz and the pleasant prospect of being handed over to the cops for the murder of Prince Al Zaman. Ronk, take the girl away. You know where to put her. I'm sorry, Marie. I guess they're calling the tune. You're very wise, Mr. Knight, to try nothing foolish. I know when I've been outsmarted, Louis. Not only outsmarted, Mr. Knight, outplanned, outmaneuvered, outthought. Yeah, I was picked as the fall guy from the beginning, wasn't I? From the moment Haroon got his brother over here to the States on the pretext of urgent oil business. Haroon, who's your boss, of course, was getting tired of playing second fiddle to Al's a man and planned to get rid of him. Get rid of him here in the States instead of on his own home ground. Correct. So Haroon engages me to protect a harem that's already protected. And then you come around with a story about your sister. Even when I beat it out of the house with Tex, you and Haroon weren't worried. You knew I'd have found out from Tex that Marie was in the house and that I'd come straight to you. Which you did, Mr. Knight. Yeah, and played right into your hands for the murder of Al's a man. Back I come with you and Fatso gets it, with me all set to take the rap. The only slip-up was with you, Louie. You couldn't know that I'd been tipped off about you by the house stick at the hotel. But I hadn't figured it all then. I was just suspicious of you. That's why I tapped you on the skull and beat it with Marie. But you have come back, Mr. Knight. Yeah, you even worked that out right. While I was getting Marie out of the way, Haroon and Hassan were carefully collecting texts. Hassan is Haroon's man, too, like you. And then after the phone call proposing the quid pro quo, or, or more accurately, the girl for girl, you figured I'd come straight back here, hoping to surprise you. You waited for me, and here I am. <laughs> like a good little pawn. Going from square to square, exactly as anticipated. Yeah, the perfect pawn. Which is about to be taken. You heard that car? That will be His Highness Haroon, the new prince with the police. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. It's been fun playing with you. Yeah, they had it worked out to a T. T for tombstone with my name on it. Oh, there's something very depressing about sitting in a cell swearing at yourself for a sucker. And that was how I spent the time all that night and next morning. That and thinking about Tex, worrying if she was all right. And then round about midday, I was taken out of the cell and driven to a downtown office. 
where a gray-haired guy sat behind a desk with a slim, efficient-looking character next to him. Take a chair, Mr. Knight. And what is this? Who are you? My name doesn't matter. This gentleman is Mr. Wilde. Hello. Uh, first of all, please accept my apologies for having kept you in that cell so long, but when your statement came to us, we had to investigate, and that takes time. I don't get it. You will when I tell you that we checked your story about Marie to spray and found it to be true. Oh, you did, huh? That's nice. Don't play tough, Knight. This isn't the time or the place for it. It's all right, Wilde. Mr. Knight can't be blamed for feeling a little sore. Oh, a little? But I suggest you don't say any more, Mr. Knight, till I put you in the picture. An international picture. Okay, okay. It's sorry. mostly concerned with Prince Al's man and his country's oil. As you probably know, that oil is extremely valuable to us, and incidentally to France. For a long time, the United States and Britain have advocated that Al's man should be deposed, but France has remained firm. As long as the oil came out of the country, they weren't worried with what went on inside. There's a democratic party within the country. It's been fostered for some time, and it's ready to take power. We could assist them to do that, bloodlessly, and now is the time with Alzheimer dead. But, of course, the French must agree. Now, wait a minute, the French... You're getting it now, aren't you? It's important that Mr. Spray must be found alive. Yeah. The indignation of the French people when they learn what happened to her will swing their government to our way of thinking. Yeah, I can see that. Now, our big problem is to find Mr. Spray. Have you any idea where she would be? Yeah, sure, somewhere in the house. It's an old place. that would uh, be a cellar. They'd probably put text there as well. Oh, yes. I'd forgotten about the other girl. I hadn't. Hmm. As soon as Haroon even thinks we're suspicious, he will undoubtedly murder the Despray girl or both of them. That's the tricky part. Mr. Wilde here is from the FBI. But I can't use him or his men any more than I dare send a squad of police with tear gas and Tommy guns into the place. It would be signing the French girl's death warrant. Looks like a one-man job. And I'm the one man. Why, Mr. Knight? Because I know the house. He's right, sir. Look, here's an idea. Take me back to headquarters, book me for murder. And let the press get all the pictures they want. When Haroon sees that in the papers, he'll feel safe again. Then pull out all the cops at the house, and tomorrow night let me out of a side door in the jail. It's not bad, sir. It could work. Yes, well, I suppose it could. It's a risk, but on the other hand, I can't think of any better scheme. Very well, Mr. Knight. That's how we'll do it. Okay, you guys, keep it quiet. Yeah, All right, now we got over the wall. Nicky, this is where you're on your own. Yeah, me and my 32. I've got another gun for you. Here. Hey, what's this, a six-inch howitzer? It's a rocket gun. You've got an emergency, you point it out the window and you pull the trigger. We'll see the rocket, all right. Uh -huh. All right, thanks. The best place to carry it is in your sock. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Just hope it doesn't go off and leave me minus three toes. Now we'll fan out and watch for your signal. If it doesn't come within 20 minutes, we'll come in anyway. Good luck, kid. Well, thanks again. So long. For the third time now, I crept up to the back door. For the third time now, it was unlocked. These characters obviously didn't believe in guarding their rear. I was halfway across the kitchen when I heard voices. You join us. I looked around for a place to hide. There was a broom cupboard built into the wall. I got in with the brooms and pulled the door too, leaving just a crack to see through. A second later, the light was switched on and Haroon and my old pal Louis came in. So in a week, Louis, we shall leave the United States. I return home to take up my rightful position. While Mr. Knight remains to die for the murder of your brother. <laughs> a sacrifice in honor of the new prince. Eh? What about the two young ladies? Well, I'm about to take their food to them, Highness. The team has prepared the tray. Good food, I see. Excellent. I don't like thin women. Return to me in the library, Louis, when you have finished. We have other plans to make. I watched Louis pick up the tray and disappear through a door I'd never seen before. It looked like part of the paneling when it was closed. I gave him a minute or so and then headed after him. The door opened on a flight of steps leading down. I'd been right about the cellar. Here's your meal. Eat up. His Highness Prince Haroon prefers women who are well filled. <laughs> I'd like to fill him with arsenic. Or even lead, honey. Night! Which means the long sleep for you. Ah! Ah! I knew you'd make it. I told Marie you'd find us. We're not out of here yet, Tex, baby. Get back to Marie and keep down on the floor, both of you. This will bring the rest of them here like hornets. All right, Nicky. Down on the floor, Marie, quick! 
will not help you, Mr. Knight. Fire low, Hassan, to floor level. <laughs> Hassan, the machine gun you see, Mr. Knight. Against that, you have no chance. No? Ah, oh, that takes care of Hassan and his Tommy gun. Now you're on your own, your highness. Come on down and demonstrate how brave a prince can be. <laughs> Not good enough, Haroon. What's the matter? Too scared to come down? Huh. <laughs> no, Mr. Knight. Not scared now since your gun is empty. I always wait my time, you see. And my time, Mr. Knight, is now. Is it? <laughs> came down the steps, I remember the rocket gun in my sock. I grabbed for it and pressed the trigger. Haroon was practically on top of me when it hit him. When I came to think of it, he didn't stay a prince for long. Later that day, I was back in the office of the gray-haired guy. Congratulations, Knight. You did a magnificent job. I'll just pin the medal above the heart, General, and I'll go home. <laughs> With both Al man and Haroon out of the way, that line of succession is gone forever. And we feel confident that a much more democratic regime will take its place. The people should erect a statue in your honor, but they <laughs> probably won't. <laughs> Just tell me one thing. Who exactly are you? Oh, let's just say that I'm connected with the State Department. My job is connected with what happens in other countries. You know, the uh, things you don't read about in the newspapers. Well, of course. Of course I'm dumb. Espionage, huh? Yes, that's the ticket. Uh, you know, if you were interested, uh, I could use a man like you. Well, uh, it's very kind of you, but no thanks. I, I'll stick to a nice, quiet racket like the uh, private eye business. <laughs> well, it hasn't been so quiet these last few days, has it? No, but it's uh, going to be much quieter for the next few days. You see, uh, there's someone back at my apartment who'll uh, see to that. <laughs> You know, Nikki? Yeah? There were times when I just couldn't believe I'd ever sit in an American apartment again and hear some real American music again. With a uh, real American man again, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although, you know, those, uh, those Eastern guys have one idea that's not bad. Mm hmm What's that? A harem. I think it's a wonderful idea. Oh? Sure, you, you get tired of a brunette, so you pick a blonde. You get tired of a blonde, and you uh, pick a redhead. Uh, no. No, you, you um, want to rewrite it. You get tired of a certain brunette, and you pick up prussic acid in your morning coffee. I never drink morning coffee. You will that morning. <laughs> Honey, I was only kidding. I love you, Tex. I love you, Nikki. Enough to marry me? Nikki, you've got yourself a one-woman harem for life. That takes care of Nikki Knight. His nightmare's over, or it's just starting, depending how you look at it. Well, I'll be back to bring you another of my books. The next one's called Destiny, Danger, the story of an English undercover man who didn't stay undercover enough. So this is Carter Brown saying so long for now. Be seeing you. In Nightmare for Night, you heard June Salter as Tex, while as Nicky Knight, you heard our star... John Bushell. The Carter Brown Mystery Theatre, based on the best-selling novels by Carter Brown, is dramatised and directed by Maurice Travers for Grace Gibson Radio Productions. <laughs> <laughs>